Good morning. We welcome this morning our parish and school family, both here in our school and at home, as we celebrate Tuesday of the first week of Lent. We come seeking to imitate our Lord, who rescues the just and is close to the brokenhearted. Our Mass intention for today is for the repose of the soul of Marie Pesta. Our celebrant is Father Dominic. Please stand. Deep within, I will plant my love, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You Good morning. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Polycarp, bishop and martyr. And so uh, with a sincere intention to fulfill the word of God, just like St. Polycarp, let us now begin our worship by saying in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of all creation, who were pleased to give the Bishop St. Polycarp a place in the company of the martyrs, grant that through his intercession, that sharing with him in the chalice of Christ, we may rise through the Holy Spirit to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the ones who sow, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. From all their distress, God rescues the just. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, 
and delivered me from all my fears. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. From all their distress, God rescues the just. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father Forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. We humans often forget our place in this world, and today God is once again reminding us that his word will be accomplished whether we like it or not. Since creation, all that has happened in this world and all that is happening today and all that will happen in the future has conformed and will conform to the plan of God. It was his plan of creation that brought all of us into the world. It is his plan that sustains us in life. And if we we conform our lives to his plan, we will be able to attain eternal life one day. We must be clear in our minds that as Catholics, we are just passing through this world and our true home is heaven. We are created in the image of God a privilege we as humans have received out of great love and mercy. Our only task here on this earth is to grow into into the likeness of this image and conform to his word and not go beyond it. 
We often cross this boundary every time we sin and defy God when our own desires are not fulfilled by following God's rules. Many go to the extent of foolishly abandoning God and instead try to take refuge in the world acting like gods themselves and then go on and try making their own plans in defiance against the plan of God. Sometimes habitual sins or addictions entrap people to think that their sin should be justified and live with a false hope that even the church might change its teaching to accommodate their sin. When man makes a plan that is against God, it returns to him void in the end because God's plan would have been accomplished. In the acclamation before the gospel today, Jesus affirms what God told us in the first reading. Jesus is telling us to stop living by bread alone and exhorts us to live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The reason the world is so troubled today is because the people who have abandoned God have preferred to consume only the bread, choosing to reject the life-giving word of God. When we consistently consume the word of God, his plans for us becomes more visible and coherent to us. Understanding God's plan helps us to continue to make progress, fulfilling this plan even in our darkest moments of our lives, because the word of God would have given us the graces that help us to be strong and persevering to navigate unscathed through those terrible storms. Jesus' incarnation, his life on earth, his suffering and death, not only shows us the pattern of how our own lives will manifest, it also showed how Jesus obeyed and followed to perfection the plan that God had made for his son. The readings are telling us to follow and obey the word of God to perfection and be prepared to suffer in the process, just like Jesus, because it will be your stepping stone to eternal life and happiness. God created us for heaven, a place reserved for us where we will find nonstop joy and happiness forever, and no tragedy or suffering or the pleasures of this world should become a hindrance for us. The saints and martyrs led by the Blessed Mother do not allow suffering or the temptations of the world to hinder their progress towards heaven. And so did Polycarp, the martyr whose memorial we celebrate today, and the thousands of the early Christians in their journey towards heaven. A while ago, I watched a movie about Polycarp called Polycarp, a Destroyer of Our Gods, based on a book with the same name. This inspiring film is based on the true story and historical accounts of the life of Polycarp. Polycarp was a prominent second century church father at Smyrna. He was born into slavery, purchased as a young boy, and raised by a Christian woman in Ephesus. He along with several others became leaders in the church after the death of the apostles. According to tradition, Polycarp was a disciple of the Apostle John. His life and ministry became a threat to the Roman Empire. This is a time when the early Christians were being persecuted, tortured, and killed in the, in the arena because they would not worship Caesar. This movie is also about Anna, a child slave girl rescued by Polycarp from the slave market. She's adopted by a Christian family who share their faith with her and loved her as their own daughter. As Aunt Anna learns her new family's ways and the practices of these strange Christians, question about who God is arise within her. She begins to learn more and more about the God who loved her and knew her by name and that the gods of the Romans were not real. With the help of Polycarp and her Christian family, Anna learns to thank God and talk to him personally as she begins to experience what living in a family 
means and what faith in Christ is all about. She witnesses Polycarp responding to the warnings of the Romans intend to kill him. He says, if they are going to kill me, I shall receive a great honor to share in the sufferings of Christ. He tells Anna, one cannot truly live until he knows what he's willing to die for. The guidance and teaching by Polycarp enables Anna herself to become more and more bold, inspired by Christ in her life, and she even dares to confront the Romans. With her newfound faith, she assists Polycarp as much as she can to save him, but the Romans catch up on Polycarp. Before he was being burnt alive by the Romans, he prays aloud, May I be accepted this day before you as an acceptable sacrifice, just as you, the ever-truthful God, have revealed beforehand to me and now have fulfilled. From his burning flesh came a sweet odor coming from the flames, as if frankincense or, or some such precious spices had been burning there. The executioners perceived that Polycarp's death was not going as planned. Losing patience, they ordered him to be stabbed to death. Witnesses, including Anna, recount that from the resulting wound there came forth a dove and such a great quantity of blood that the fire was extinguished. Years later, Anna too would be martyred for Christ, but she, by her example, became one of those who, who was successful to transmit her powerful faith to inspire each one of us, encouraging us so that we too can take a stand for God. The early Christians like Polycarp and Anna understood that in order to become fertile from the word of God, one must be prepared to accept suffering when it comes and take a stand to trust Christ during those times by keeping our focus upon him always. St. Paul considers suffering as nothing in return for the glory that will be revealed to all of us. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus himself teaches us a prayer to the Father in heaven, which we have prayed so often. In this prayer, we are acknowledging what God told us today in the first reading by saying, the king, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is going to be ac accomplished and we must match our will with his before it's too late. As we prepare to receive our daily bread in the Eucharist today, receive the graces of this wonderful sacrament and like Mary and all her saints, especially St. Polycarp and the early Christian martyrs who accepted the word of God, God will forgive our trespasses and deliver us from all evil. We will be delivered from all our fear and distress, and one day, with all the saints and angels in heaven, we will together extol the glorious name of Jesus our King forever and ever. Amen. Nourished in this holy season by the word of life, we pray, have mercy, God, in your kindness. For those who proclaim the scriptures in Christian communities, we pray. For those who preach God's word of repentance, reconciliation, and salvation, we pray. For those who break open the gospel in study and scholarship, we pray. For those who meditate on the scriptures in silent prayers, we pray. For those who rely on the word to bear them through sickness, pain, and grief, we pray. For those who seek ancient wisdom in the words of scripture and tradition, we pray. For those who await the full revelation of the word in eternity, we pray. 
and for all your intentions that you hold in the silence of your hearts. We pray. Almighty God of all knowledge, as rain and snow water the earth, so your word nourishes us. Till the soil of our hearts and make us ready to receive the word from on high, that Christ may yield in us a rich harvest of repentance and reconciliation, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Polycarp overcame every bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Polycarp, poured out like Christ to glorify your name. Show forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Ma Marie Pesta, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with St. Polycarp, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. For all those watching the Mass through live stream, we will now pray the Spiritual Communion Prayer by St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
During this holy season of Lent, we have extended adoration on Fridays until 6.30 p.m. when we have Stations of the Cross, followed by benediction. We hope that you and your family will join us for this long-standing tradition here at St. Gregory the Great. This morning and each Tuesday morning uh, during Lent, uh, our grade, a grade of our school children will receive uh, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, so there will not be private prayer available in the church um, until after that. And this morning we happen to have a funeral following that, so the church will open back up around 12 o'clock. Thank you. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, Polycarp, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May your faithful be strengthened, O God, by your blessing. In grief, may you be their consolation. In tribulation, their power to endure. And in peril, their protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Deep within, I will plant my love. Stone, but in your heart, my.